Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers and Stuff. Uh, this is a Bayan Soundbook Color. It's a Bluetooth speaker uh, with a Duff USB connector on it because these things always break. Uh, so we're going to try and replace the USB connector on this thing. Not quite sure how to get into it. It's kind of a block. It's a really cool design though. Look at this. Open it up. There's the speaker array. It automatically turns on when we open it up as well, which is pretty cool. And uh, if I close that, it turns itself off. That's uh, kind of a neat design. I like it. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, right. Um, I think we're going to start off by removing these two screws on the back and see if that sort of... It looks like we've got to take off this soft cover. And if we can get this back cover off, I think we'll see a bit more access. So, um, what are those screws? Those are T8. Oh, and they're very stiff as well. Yeah, those are like self-tappers, those boys are. Oh, the screwdriver's trying to jump. This is the kind of time that really separates good screwdrivers from bad. And I'm trying to see if my nice shiny new wearers are getting damaged by that. No, I think they're okay. Fair enough. That probably would have shredded my old screwdriver. All right, so I think we need to do a hard power off on this. So that's on. And that's off, apparently. All right. Ah, that seems to be coming off. Is that stuck down? I think it is. Let's just try giving that a bit of... Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's got some metal clips. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, look at that. Look at that big bass speaker. This thing's probably really good. I'm kind of intrigued because I want a new Bluetooth speaker. Hmm. I think that's a T10. Yeah. Yeah, well, look at that. That's pretty swish. That's fun. So, is that not actually a speaker? No, it's not. Huh. I wonder what that's all about. That's not a speaker. It's like a speaker looking diaphragm. Is that just for show? Is that just to look fancy? Because that's visible through that bit. I think that's literally just there to make it look like it's got a subwoofer in it, when actually it doesn't. It's got these two drivers, and that's nothing either, so yeah. Oh, that's disappointing. That's super disappointing. Oh well. Okay, let's unplug this, flat, this flex cable. That just pulls out. So we've got what looks like a... Uh, I, think, is that, I think that's a, just an 18650 cell there, with a little, ch with a little controller on it. And that goes on to the main board. And then we've got a Bluetooth module there, uh, a controller module there. Um, and that's probably, that's a TI that that chip is. And then we've got something else. And then we've got a Cirrus Logic chip there. That's gonna be the audio uh, chipset. That is probably some kind of small microcontroller that's then handling everything. So that might be, and then we've got some power regulation down there as well. Uh, so yeah, and then what's that guy there? Not sure, that might be some kind, that's probably some LED driving stuff or just you know an IO expander type thing. So it can drive this sequence of LEDs along the front there for the volume. So yeah, pretty simple device. I'm sad that that's not a subwoofer. That makes this a lot less good than I thought it was. Not that I've heard the audio coming out of it, but whatever. Anyway, uh, the ports are on this little module here, so that means that this bit, next bit might be quite straightforward. I think we've got to drop to a T6 for those screws. There we go, that comes out of there. Ooh, look at that, not bad. So then finally, we've got an ordinary USB connector there. 
and there's an LED on the bottom and an LED on the top. Presumably those both light up, so then that provides a uniform glow for this charge, this light pipe that functions as a ring. And as you can see, that just stretches over on the top and the bottom of that little circuit board, just so the light from the LEDs can shine in. Cool, all right, let's take a look at this little fella. We'll remove that flat flex, because we can. All right, hot air on. Let's get this connector off. Uh, we're gonna need some more airflow. I waxed my airflow up because we've got to heat up all this metal. No worries. All right, let's clean up these pads with some nice leaded solder. And then we'll wipe them down with some wick. If I can find my wick. Ah. So I'm going to switch over to uh, the tabletop for this bit. Oof. I'm going to stop clearing, trying to clear those holes because we're just damaging the board. The, the tolerances around that area are super thin. I'm probably going to lay on as much solder as I can on these anchors to try and give this thing some strength, but it doesn't have a lot of it, which is probably why it broke in the first place. All right, let's get... Firstly, let's check the uh, connector I took off to make sure I've got a matching one. I'm screwed. So this one uses a through-hole USB connector, not a surface mount. I've only got surface mount jobbies, so I've got to get some different USB connectors. See you after the cut. Okay, right, it's later on. I've got some correct USB connectors now. So I'm just gonna put some new solder on those pads uh, and then we're going to, um, uh, yes, I did just try and put my flux into my soldering iron holder. Uh, right, and then we're going to hot air the new connector in place because I'm not able to properly clear uh, these anchor holes um, and I've already tried to clear them um, I've already damaged the anchor holes so I don't want to do any further damage with the soldering iron there so we're just going to stick some fresh solder on those pads and preferably not have those two bridging there if you could kindly not God, they are really close together. going to remove this capacitor just so I can get better access to these pins. Okay, I'm fully aware we have a bridge there. However, those pins seem to be connected at the circuit board level. I'm not sure if they were before or not, but I, I've dug in there and I cannot get rid of that bridge. So we'll find out. Oh, I've got to put that little cap back on. Oh, we're okay. I had my pump pins the wrong way around. So those two bridged pins, that is ground and not connected. So it's perfectly okay for those to be tied together. 
the five volt one on the left there, that guy's not shorted to anyone. So we're fine, we're good. Hmm. So, I would dearly love to get some more solder on that anchor point that we're looking at there. We've got solder on the bottom of it, but not on the top compared to this side, which as you can see, we've got some on the top pad and on the bottom pad. However, I know from past experience that if you're not super careful, the solder will just flow straight inside the connector and ruin the connector. Once you get solder inside that connector, you ain't getting that out again. You've just got to start with a new connector. So I'm going to quit while I'm ahead there. We know that those connections are all dandy and we've got our little cap back on. So I'm going to quit while I'm ahead, I think, and we'll see how long this guy holds out. This is all practice for me as far as I'm concerned. I don't pretend to be good at micro soldering. So uh, let's see how well this goes. That's not bad. Hopefully that light pipe will act as a bit of a, a bit of a sort of a strengthening beam to stop that port getting bent around. I think that might be tough enough. I think that's going to be okay. Ah, it's trying to turn on because I have the covers on it. Shut up. Okay, that's the flat flex connected again. Right, let's rough fit that. That'll do. Uh, just make sure that that's all going to crush into place properly, which it will. And I think that should just push in. Yeah, there we go. All right, I think we can do a test on that now before we put all the screws back in. Let's grab a power bank and a charge lead. All right, here goes nothing. And our survey says, cool, got a red light, which you can't see under the bench light, but it's there. And it's charging at uh, 6,800 milliamps. Sorry, 680 milliamps, which is fine. That looks about right. I would expect it to charge at approximately that level, sort of somewhere between half an amp and an amp. Uh, and that seems to have a fairly stable link there. Cool, I'm happy with that, let's reassemble. And one more thing that I missed on the teardown as well, that little white spot there, that's the NFC on this thing. And it's literally a paper sticker with some wires in the back of it which you can faintly see. Let me just see if I can get you guys the angle on that. So if you look, you can very faintly see concentric lines there. I'm not sure if that's gonna come out by the time this gets mangled by YouTube and stuff, but you can see a very faint spiral in there. Um, and that spiral is a coil of wire, an antenna. And then when the NFC device in this, you know, like a phone, pulses out an NFC signal, that wire will, will get a current flowing through it, which will power that tiny little chip in the center, which will then respond with the Bluetooth address of the phone. And that's how your NFC works. Yeah, that still works. There we go, all done, with a nice, shiny new USB connector. Bam. That'll do nicely. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.